Hello, everybody. Today, we're talking about the sacroiliac joint, what it does, how it goes wrong, and what to do about it. Let's start with what is the sacroiliac joint? Everybody talks about it all the time. It's the SI. It's the new fun thing to inject. So what is it? The sacroiliac joint is a big flat joint where the wings of the pelvis join the spine. And it happens right in here. But by in here, I mean like in here. It's about this deep on most horses, especially a horse this size. Uh, so it's not a joint that we can readily see. We can't x-ray it. We can ultrasound part of it, but not all of it. You know, there's, it's a difficult joint to image. What does it do? It acts as the anchor for the pelvis to the spine. The other thing it does is it transfers power from all of these huge muscles of locomotion as your horse is firing them to move forward, to jump, to slide, to stop, whatever they're doing, uh, they're firing these muscles and they all cross over the sacroiliac joint right here. And so it's an anchor point for all of that to happen. The joint itself is, is, it's a big flat joint like this, right? Like, so literally you've got the spine here and you've got the, sac the sacrum here and it kind of right to it. So if you take that joint apart on a, a dissection of a horse, you'll see that it is about the size of my palm and it is very flat, just like this. And the two sides are held together sort of with Velcro is honestly what it looks like. There's a bit of joint fluid in there, but it's not a joint like if you think about the stifle or the coffin joint or one of these joints that does this big range of movement and has a whole bunch of fluid in it. It's not a joint like that. It's a big flat joint. So the sacroiliac joint does a couple things that cause it to go a little bit wrong. <laughs> and one is transferring all that power that Velcro can sometimes get shifted. When you think about a hunter's bump, one of those the kind of old timey terms, that is the, the very top here. This is called the tuber sacrali. That is the top of the pelvis and you'll see they should normally be even. On one side, if that Velcro gets a little bit torn, it'll boop like this and you'll have one side a little higher than the other. Oftentimes that is an acute injury. Those horses are painful when it happens. We give it some time and they settle in. The other thing that can happen much like any joint, it can just get a little sore. And oftentimes when it gets sore is from overuse. So horses using their booty a lot to learn how to jump and in particular learning how to do things, learn how to jump, learn how to, to slide, learn how to turn barrels really fast. Lots of the things that we ask horses to do that really asks them to sit during that process, they can develop some soreness. So it's not an uncommon thing for us to see in younger horses. I, when we are looking at a younger horse, it may be something we're going to get to treatment next, but that we treat once and we never do again. In older horses, typically the reason we see it as a problem is either overuse, that horse is being asked to do something in the show ring typically that it's not fit for, or we have an accident, you know, like we've got a leg that slides out from under them when trying to turn sharp in the field or, you know, getting on a trailer, you know, somehow we have sort of a leg that goes where it's not supposed to. That will often be where we see sacroiliac injuries. But if we keep our older horses fit and ready to go, then typically, this area is not a problem for us. One of the ways that we know that the sacroiliac is a problem for horses is many of these horses will display bucking behavior, especially going into or out of the lope or the canter. So these are the horses you put your leg on to ask them to step up and they'll kick a leg out hard uh, or they'll let loose with one buck and that's all you've got. They can also be a horse that doesn't want to set properly and when you get looking at them, you feel like you've got pain here. Some of the things that we do, there's not a great diagnostic for this, but we can look at some things. One of the things we'll do is grab the, the tuber cocci and the tuber ischii, so these two points back here. This, is, this horse is a little big to do this on, but you can push them together and some horses don't like that. 
Um, we can grab the tuber sacrale on one side and pull it towards you. Um, it's nearly impossible to do this too hard, so don't worry about that. But some horses will really react to that. That's a good indication. And then the other test that we'll do is what we call a cross body flexion, where I take the left hind and I ask them to cross it over their body and I flex it, holding it on the other side and then ask them to jog off after usually about 20 or 25 seconds. Uh, some of these horses, they won't even let you pick it up and ask them to cross it over. All right, through a history and a physical exam and a lameness exam, that veterinarian you've got a great relationship with uh, and your horse and you have decided that the sacroiliac is the problem. So what do we do now? Uh, the big thing that we use for these guys is injections. And it is a place where we commonly use steroids and that's the nature of the joint. Those big flat joints aren't as amenable to some of the newer products like IRAP, PRP, um, ProStride, you know, some of the newer biologics. They can work there and we do use them on horses that have metabolic issues, but by and large, this is a joint that handles steroids really well. We'll get into in a second why this shouldn't be a common joint injection for your horse anyways. So an even better reason to try a little bit of steroids. The other thing for us with sacroiliac injections is that they are often a bit of what we call a diagnostic therapeutic injection because it can be a difficult spot for us as veterinarians to 100% say there's a problem. So we may have a high index of suspicion and say, I'm pretty sure it's a sacroiliac, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's put some steroids in there and see how things go. So that's what we call a diagnostic therapeutic joint injection. It helps us tell if that's the problem area and treats it all at the same time. In order to do that, we're gonna take a very long spinal needle and we're gonna do the injection sort of right here, aiming this way. Um, you may also see it done with a second needle up here. Uh, so you may have two needles doing this number. And we're gonna put some steroids in there. From there, we're gonna ask the horse to rest for a couple of days. Uh, we all sort of had different ideas on it, but I like to let mine continue on their normal turnout routine. And then after that, we're gonna get them back started and see how they're feeling. I, this is a one for me that I like to add a lot of PT exercises after the fact. The good news is all these PT exercises I'm gonna go through are also really good for strengthening the sacroiliac so that it is not a problem. And for most horses, if we can get their sacroiliac strong enough, it's no longer an issue for us and we can manage them really well from here on out with just strength exercises. A couple things we're gonna do is lots of leg yields both directions. Uh, depending on the horse, walk, trot, canter. But if only walk, that's fantastic. That's a great way to build that flexibility and strength that they need in the sacroiliac. The other thing we add are a whole lot of step over. So stepping over things at a very slow speed. So we want the slowest speed we can go while asking them to step over the highest thing we can get them to step over. And the third most common exercise I add is jumps at a very slow speed. This is also very dependent on the horse. I added this to a reining horse and he jumped very tiny X's versus if I add it to a jumper, they may be walking down to three foot jumps and walking over, you know, like asked to jump that. So this is very, very, very horse and rider dependent to some extent. But those are three of my top exercises for sacroiliacs. The goal for them is that we inject them once we're able to remove the pain, and then from there, we're managing them with physical therapy and strengthening. If we're having to go back to sacroiliacs multiple times, there's something else going on and we need to dig a little bit deeper and see why that's the problem. The other thing with sacroiliacs and any back pain in general is that you wanna check the angles of the hind feet. So this is a place where we shoot lateral radiographs of the hind feet to see the angle the, the bottom of the coffin bone makes with the ground. Hind feet are normally zero to three, so they can be you know, parallel to the ground, no problem, or a little bit positive, versus front feet are typically in the three to five degree range. But there's continuing really good research, there's historical and new stuff being done all the time on why those hind feet angles are super important for the rest of this. One of the things that happens when your coffin bone angle is too low is those horses spend all of their time with their back sort of in extension. 
and it just gets chronically sore. So check with your veterinarian about having lateral foot films of the hind feet done. So there you have it, the incredible sacroiliac joint, why you shouldn't be injecting it all the time, some things you can do to avoid injecting it, and what it even does.